listen, 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 listen. I want to welcome you to a Sunday like no other Sunday because we've never had it before. God is with us right now. And I believe that the expectation, I can feel expectation in the room. I can feel expectation online. If you're expecting something right now, I need you to type it in the chat and say it in the room. I'm expecting something from God. Come on, somebody say, I'm expecting something from God. Today, I just want to say how grateful I am that you decided to join us at Transformation Church. Right now, we are in a crazy season of believing God in crazier faith. And there are people all over the world that are literally putting their faith and expectation in not what God has done in the Bible days and not what God has done for somebody else, but what God can do through our lives. And I'm excited that you're joining us no matter how you got here, no matter if your baby mama told you that you couldn't come see the kids unless you watch church with her, or no matter if somebody's playing this in the gym that you're in, I believe this is a divine intersection in your life. And I believe that God has something so specific just for your life. So Today, I just want to pray. Could everybody just lift your hands wherever you're watching, wherever you're tuning in right now? And I want to pray that your ears would be open today. Yep. The Bible says, he that have an ear to hear, let him hear. There's been a lot of stuff trying to block our hearing this week. And today, I'm going to pray that you hear God. So, Father, in this place, right now, Father, in this moment, God, we ask you, to get your word to us the way that only you can. Father, you know where we come from. You know our background. You know our problems. You know our issues. You know our proclivities. You know our bends. You know our our ideas, our thoughts. And right now, Father God, you know how to get to us. So right now, we're submitting our hearts and our lives to you. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. Say something to us that changes our trajectory. Say something to us today, Father God, that changes our families, that changes, Father, our future. Say something, God, that changes our heart. Thank you, Father God, that nobody's heart will be the same after this message. Thank you for transformation taking place on the inside of us. And today, before you do or say anything else, Father, we have given you worship. We have given you praise. We have given out of our lives. But now, Father God, give to us through this word. Speak to us like nobody else. We trust you. We believe you. And we praise you in advance. In Jesus' name. Why don't you take three seconds right now and lift your voice. Oh, come on. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord in your home. At your house, in the track. Come on, give God a praise. Hallelujah. Anybody ready for the word? All right, y'all sit down. Hey, everybody get your notepads ready. Thank you, musicians. Don't we have an amazing worship team and band? Thank God for y'all, man. I'm so grateful. They set the atmosphere for what God's about to do. Today, I got a word, y'all. Um, last week, um, God did something special. <laughs> he, he really um, purified a lot of our motives. That's what last week was about. Purification of our motives. Why do we want it? Why are we wanting God to do these things? Is this, is this what God wants to do? We talked about our uh, uh, anointed imagination. We talked about um, um, God really purifying the things. But today, um, I want to talk to you in week four of a series we're calling, somebody say, crazier faith. See, some of y'all are like, what happened to crazy faith? I believe that God's taken us to a level where it's the ER in our lives. (laughs) Crazier, healthier. Oh, y'all missed it. Wiser. Somebody say, don't forget the ER. I believe this is the season of the ER. I think we have 80 days or something left in this year. And God's saying, I want you to be healthier. I want you to be wiser. I want you to be, come on, find the ER. Give me another ER word. What what does God want for us? Smarter. What'd you say? Happier. Happier. Huh? Health. What'd you say? Wealthier. Somebody's here. Somebody got that. Come on, in the chat, give me an ER that you're believing God for right now. I need somebody to do it. What's another one, huh? 
Strong. Oh, you know, I like that word. What'd you say? Bolder. Bolder. Come on, give me three more. I feel that thing. Greater. Greater. Somebody needs to feel that. Somebody needs to shout greater. Greater. Shout greater. greater. This is the season of the ER. And that's why when I came back, we were just going to name this series Crazy Faith. And God said, no, 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 no. This is the season of Ur. I, 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 want, I, I want you to add the ER. Because what the ER does is, it, is it, it, it acknowledges where you've been, but then gives you the expectation of something greater. Uh, and I don't know where you've been okay with being at that status or that standard, but my God is saying, ER, greater, stronger, healthier, (laughs) bolder. There's some ERs that you need to go ahead and ask God, would you, would you allow this to not just be an idea, but would you bring this into my life? And one of those things for us as a church is crazier. Crazier in faith to believe that the promises of God are really true and that they can actually come to pass in my life. And I just know that everybody won't believe, but there's about 15,000. I'm not, it's not everybody watching, but there's about 15,000 people across this nation. Word up to Transformation Nation. There's about, there's about 15,000 people around this nation who have the faith to believe God can do crazier. He can do more than what he's done before. And so today, I want to help you with that. But we got to take it all the way back to the place where your faith resides. Okay. Okay? So today, I want to talk about the environment of crazy faith. The habitat of crazy faith. The surroundings of crazy faith. The scene or the setting of your crazy faith. The conditions around your crazy faith. I think I like this word the best. The atmosphere of your crazy faith. What atmosphere are you trying to believe in? Some of us are living in an atmosphere contrary to what we're believing. Many of us are claiming the exact opposite of what we are living in right now. And God's saying you can be in a different situation, but if there is any way that you can change the atmosphere of your faith, it is time for you to move to a new address and location. Some of y'all need to move off of certain streets in your belief. You need to move off of the insecurity lane. You need to get off a lying row. You need to be able to move to a place of belief boulevard. You need to be able to get in to an atmosphere fear of anointing avenue some of the address that we've been believing God to meet us at are the wrong addresses we've been in the wrong atmosphere trying to say I got faith and today I want you to know that certain things can only live and flourish in certain atmospheres I'm going to say that one more time certain things can only live and flourish in certain atmospheres. Let's play a little game real quick. Um, If I said to you, a fish flourishes in the atmosphere of A, a desert, B, a kitchen, or C, water, what would be the correct atmosphere that a fish would flourish in? C, C, some of y'all in water. Now, in, in, in the desert, A fish could flop around, but it wouldn't flourish. In the pan, in the kitchen, some of y'all are like, no, that's where that fish need to be. And put a little lemon on it and saute it. But you would be flourishing. But the fish would not be flourishing in that kitchen. The only place that the fish could flourish is where? In the water. Okay, let me give you another example. A flower. A flower flourishes in the atmosphere of a vase, the atmosphere of a bouquet, beautiful bouquet, beautiful, gorgeous, 
or in the atmosphere of soil? Which one is it? Soil. It's sea soil. But the only reason it's sea soil is because that's the atmosphere it can grow in. It's not the most beautiful atmosphere. The vase is a much more beautiful atmosphere for the flower. Y'all not helping me. The bouquet is a better presentation of the flower. But the only atmosphere that that flower can flourish in is in the soil. What are you trying to say? Some of you have been trying to go after atmospheres that look good and that present well. But God says, I need you to get in the atmosphere that may be a little dirtier or uncomfortable than what you want it to be. But that's the place. Uh, that's the place where you're going to flourish. That's the place where you're going to grow. That's the place where people are going to get to see your full potential. And many people don't understand that it takes being in the right atmosphere to see the fullness of what God placed on the inside of you. One more, one more, one more. Okay. Faith flourishes in the atmosphere of A, doubt, B, fear, or C, belief. Which atmosphere does your faith flourish in? See, so how do you say you believe God? But everything you believe him for, you plan it in fear. How are we going to say that, watch this, we believe God, but everything we plant in facts. God said, I need you to put your crazy faith in the atmosphere where it can flourish. And that atmosphere is belief. Write this point down. Crazy faith flourishes in the atmosphere of belief. Say that with me. Crazy faith flourishes in the atmosphere of belief. If we do not get the things that God says to us in an atmosphere of belief, it will not flourish. What if I knew I was called to be a pastor? But when I said that to my family, I was in an atmosphere of doubt and pessimism. What that does to what I have faith for. Some of you are paycheck to paycheck right now, but God has birthed a business or a nonprofit or something on the inside of you. And be careful who you say it to. Because if you're in the wrong atmosphere, they will choke out the very thing that's supposed to go and bring them shade. Oh, God. In a, different season, in a different season, what you allow to grow will be the very thing you eat from and bring you shade. But if you kill it in seed form, oh, my God. You know that's why they tried to kill every boy under the age of two. Because the best time to kill a king is when it's a kid. And the best time to kill your dream when it's in seed form. Wow. Yes, that's good. So what you have to do is protect yes. the things that God has shown you uh -huh. by making sure it's in an atmosphere of belief. Yes. Some of y'all don't got nobody around you that really believes. And I don't, I don't like, I'm, I'm very far removed from that. And, and, and that's why I'm coming to be able to encourage you right now because everybody around me, you can't be around me if you don't believe. I don't roll with nobody who don't have crazy faith belief. We don't got to be at the same level, but you got to at least be able to agree. You ain't got to, you don't got to be able to figure it out. And today I'm coming to challenge some of your comfortable atmospheres. Some of the places that are most comfortable to you are killing your purpose. Some of the places that are the, the most familiar are the places that your purpose will become a funeral. Come on. 
Can I just read a scripture to you that I've read all my life, but jack me up in a different way this week? Now we're talking about faith, right? Okay, let's go to Romans 10, 17. People tell me this all the time. I've heard it all my life, but I want us to see it from a different perspective today. It says, so faith comes from hearing. That is hearing the good news about Christ. Another translation says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. I want us to read it one more time. So faith comes from what? Hearing. That is hearing the good news about Christ. One more time. Everybody read it together. So faith comes from hearing. That is hearing the good news about Christ. Now, I've read that all my life and I've been able to quote it and say it and believe it. And then as I was in study, and this is why the Bible tells you to meditate on his word, like keep going over it, ruminate about it, like look at it, look at it a different way, read it slow, read it fast. Like, and as I was reading this, God said, Michael, do not casually carouse by the comma. And I was like, what? He said, there's more happening in this verse then you're giving it credit for. Wow. So I went to the comma and it says, so faith comes from hearing, Come comma. Yeah. Okay. Come on. Hold on, did you just give me a major key, God? He said, I gave you a principle. Wow. That's it. Faith, whatever you're believing uh-huh. is strengthened by what you are hearing. Yeah. Faith in God, faith in gangs, faith in money, faith in ministry. He said, whatever you have faith for is being strengthened and fortified by what you are hearing. He said, this scripture has a principle and a priority. He said, I'm first going to give you the principle. Faith comes by hearing, period. He said, but now I'm going to give you the best priority to make sure that you're hearing the things that's going to build your faith right. He said, that is hearing priority, the good news about Christ. So if you're going to be hearing anything because faith is being built every time you hear anything, you need to be hearing the good news about Christ. You need to be hearing about the miracles he did. You need to be hearing how he forgave your sins. You need to be hearing that there is no now, no condemnation for those of us who are in Christ Jesus. You need to be hearing that greater works will we do. You need to be hearing that we can lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You need... Because if you're going to walk in crazy faith, the priority is... Hearing the good news about Christ. But the principle is faith comes by hearing. Hmm. So if faith comes by hearing, I got a point for you that might jack up your friend group. Whoever has your ear also has your faith. Whoever has your ear also has your faith. Because faith comes by hearing. Oh, and the priority of what you should be hearing is the word of God. But the truth of the matter is, in a seven-day period, what percentage of your hearing is the good news about Christ? We're hearing a lot of gossip. Uh Uh-oh. We're hearing a lot of bad news. We're hearing a lot about sickness and COVID and job loss. We're hearing a lot about our family line and our dysfunction. We're hearing a lot about what they doing and who they like and what we're going to. And we're hearing, a, we're hearing a bunch. And everything you're hearing is building your faith. The question is, is it building your faith in something that will last? And I just need you to know whoever has your ear also has your faith. Put their ear up on the screen for me. This your ear. This is one of God's greatest creations on our body. This, 
allows us to be able to go into places with our eyes closed. And because our ear is sensitive, we could hear the footsteps of an animal. We could be able to hear somebody. How many of you? Okay, let me say this. Right now, if your mama came in this room and yelled your name, and some of y'all 58 years old and your mama ain't been on the earth for three years, like she, like gone. But if you hear your mama say, Michael, Janice, Daquan Day, y'all know y'all got some creative names. Because of the sensitivity of your ear and a voice of thousands of people, you could still hear. This ear, I need to ask you a question. Who has control over it? Because they are also controlling what you believe. Who has your ear? Is it the news? Is it a specific political party? Is it your favorite influencer? I'm stepping on everybody's toes in this one, so just get ready. Who has your ear? Is it a fashion icon? Just because they can dress doesn't mean they can lead you. Who has your ear? Is it your beautician? Because some of y'all, somebody start touching on your hair, they can tell you anything. Some of y'all, one of the greatest places of gossip is at the barbershop and at your beautician. And you done changed how you view somebody you're supposed to reach because you heard about somebody from somebody who don't even know them. Uh Uh-oh, I'm in somebody's business. Who has your ear? Is it the big homie on the block? Is it the captain of the team? Is it your favorite musician? Who has your ear? Somebody say, who has my ear? ear? Is it your boss? Just because they're over your promotion doesn't mean they're over your purpose. And people have been moved out of their character, doing things not in integrity. Uh Uh-oh. Because they have an authority but they're not the authority and they have your ear and it's okay to fudge the numbers a little bit. And we all, we all take a couple of shoes and and yeah, they won't know about the discount. Who has your ear? Let me stop. (laughs) Who has your ear? Your coworkers? Uh Is it a specific podcast? But they're so good at helping me feel better when I'm down and I don't know. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying is, can you live your life? Based on what they're saying, because they're building your faith right now. Who has your ear? A motivational coach that tells you to 10 exit? A high school buddy? A pro athlete? Somebody that wears your family's favorite team color? The person who is into this really niche thing that only you know with as comes on Etsy and they're the four leading. Just because they're an expert at it does not mean they're an expert for you. Who has your ear? And this is a real evaluation question. I need you to ask yourself, because some of you, your parents have your ear so much. See, because they were responsible for training you in the way that you should go. But now some of y'all old and crusty. And God's telling you to do something. But mom didn't pray about it. She just thinks she knows what's best. Dad did not ask God for any wisdom. Their daughter's just never gonna, and their son's, it's going against principle. And I'm asking who has your ear because there will come a time in your life where you're gonna have to stand on the word of God over the word of your parents. I I know, I know it's tight, but it's right. There will come a time. I had to do this with my parents at one time. They were telling me that I wasn't supposed to do something that I knew God was telling me to do. And I had to literally look at them. I said, you trained me to hear God's voice. You told me that God would speak to me and he would confirm it to me and he would show me. And so I'm going to have to honorably not do what you're saying. Because I hear God speaking to me. I'm talking about real stuff. Who has your ear? Does culture have your ear? Does your pastor or leader have your ear? Does your therapist have your ear? Does Christ have your ear? I'm asking this because if you don't evaluate this, I don't even have to know what you believe in God if I just know who you're around. I I I don't have to like... 
is, is this a person of faith? Just introduce me to your five top friends. And let me talk to them. And your friends will expose your faith. Ooh, that was nasty. Your friends. No, 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 no. They need, they need to know what I'm saying right here. The thing that you need to understand is that the people that you consistently live your life around will be the greatest sign of how you believe God. Your friends will expose your faith. When you get in a situation where it looks bad and your friends is like, well, you can just, you can just forget this and you can go there and you can leave this situation and you don't got friends that say, well, let's pray about this and let's stand and, and I'll meet you over there and let's stand in faith and let's believe against the diagnosis. You will be exposed so quickly by who you got on speed dial. Who has your ear? This means that some of your friend groups and some of the family access has to get, watch this cuss word, boundaries. I'm trying to get you to live in crazy faith, but you can't get crazy faith that every time you get something, then people that you love come in. To rob, poison, and kill the very thing God told you to do. Boundaries are more biblical than people give credit for. And today, I want to let you know, write this point down. You must protect your ears to protect your purpose. Whoever has your ears, JD, they have your faith. And the reason I'm telling you this is because God's about to give y'all, ooh, I feel it, some crazy faith ideas, some crazy faith plans, some things that nobody in your family, somebody believes it, somebody in Texas, somebody in Florida, somebody on the third row. God's about to give you something that nobody else has do, but you got to protect it. God will not give it to you and then he protect it. He gives it to you for you to protect it. And that's why I got to do this. Everybody put your hands on your ears. This is the new sign of how people with crazy faith live their life. God spoke it to me and I'm going to protect it. I cannot let anybody into this. I can't watch any movie or documentary. I can't listen to every bit of music that comes out. I know it's certified lover boy, but uh -uh, I'm trying to live in purity. Oh, y'all playing. But I love Drake. I do too. But there's certain things that I will not let in. Because this is not going to forfeit my purpose. And so what I found out is that it's our responsibility to protect the things that God give us in crazy faith. To protect our hearing. And that means that you have to have a strong, this is the title of my message, circle of faith. Every believer needs a circle of faith. Every person who's going to reach purpose needs a circle of faith. Every person who's going to live their life on the limb and walk on water and do things that nobody else has done is going to need a circle of faith. Some of y'all be like, no, I don't. I'll do it by myself. God never called anybody to do anything alone. He may give you a vision alone, but then he always tells you to communicate that vision to a trusted group of people because you were never meant to carry out the vision alone. God says it's not good for man to be alone. So he will never give you a vision that doesn't include somebody else. That was a key right there for some of y'all believing in crazy faith. God will never, well, I'm a just, and then I'm a just, and then I'm a just, and God is like, no, you're not. Because when I do things, even all the way back in the Bible, how did Jesus send the apostles out? Two by two. He never let anybody do nothing. Alone. Even when he died on the cross, he died with two other people. He said, I'm not going to do nothing alone so that they know that when they live in, they're not going to do anything alone. So that's why if we're going to see the purposes of God come into our life, I need the circle of faith. Somebody say, I need, I need 
the circle of faith. Okay, so let me break down the circle of faith and how God showed this to me. And this is going to make you this week reevaluate every, re everybody in your life, everybody on your timeline, everybody that you follow, and everybody that you're planning to do lunch with next week. Okay, here we go. The circle of faith, it starts with your family. And you don't get to choose your family. But the best thing is to have a family with crazy faith. Like the, the beginning of your circle of faith starts with the household you say wah in. And it's one of those things that is really not fair because you didn't get to pick. Let's be honest. Some of us were raised in households that believed God, that believed in faith. I was raised in a household, thankfully, where my parents would pray with us and have Bible studies and tell us to believe and all that other stuff. But I'm very aware that's not a common thing today. But this is the thing that I found out. Family is God's big idea. It's literally all he wants to make. All of the analogies in the Bible, everything that talks about his sons and daughters and from generation to generation to generation. And the church is the bride of Christ and he is the, everything is about family. And what I want you to know is that maybe you weren't born into a family with crazy faith. But you can create it. Like maybe it didn't happen for you. But you can be the one to stand up and say, with my little cousins, I'm going to take them to McDonald's every Thursday, and we're going to do a Bible study around McDoubles. And I know y'all see y'all want to be fake. And, and, and they look up to me, and they like my Jordans, and they like my earrings, and they like my stuff. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a place where they can bring their dreams a place they can bring their ideas, a place where they can say stuff and I, and, and I, and I shape it and, and, and help them understand what the word of God has to say about sex outside of marriage and, and what the word of God has to say about pornography and what the word of God has to say about all of these different, I'm gonna just create a family of crazy faith. What I'm trying to say to you is this is the start of the circle of faith. And many of you, the reason why you have not been able to go to the places you've wanted to go is because of the family you were born into. Wow. It's not because you don't love them. Right. It's not because they're not good people. It's just they haven't stepped into this level of believing God that allows you and unlocks you to believe God too. And what I'm saying to you is the first ring of the circle of faith is a family with crazy faith. You might not have it, but you can create it. As I just said that, I felt like somebody just made a decision that my family is going to have crazy faith. If that's you, would you raise your hand all over the building online? Somebody say, that's me. That's me. We're a family of faith. I like that, B. We're a family of faith. Somebody just declare it by faith. We have a family of faith. Family of faith. So let me go to the next ring. The next ring outside of your family is something you have control over. It's your friends. And see, this is always an interesting one for me. Because friends, when you're in elementary and high school, are made out of survival. Like, like, like you're just trying to survive the social awkwardness of... Can we be honest? So you find people who like the same things you like. You're like, you like Spongebob? I like Spongebob. You like find people like, I eat pizza with the crust and the ranch and you eat pizza. Like you're just trying to socially survive. But if you don't ever mature and break out of that, all your relationships will be based on survival. All your friendships are based on who can help me get a promotion, who can get me to the next level, who makes me feel better about myself, even in my dysfunction. 
Some of y'all got ride or die friends and that's exactly what they're doing. They're riding you until you die because they'll never correct you. They'll never tell you this is the wrong way to go. That's not the person that you're supposed to be with. Does that really look like they'll never tell you? They're like, that's my friend. That's my best friend. That's my best friend. And they just do all of this all the time. But what you need is friends that are not picked out of survival. You need friends that are picked out of necessity. There are friends in my life that are necessary for my purpose. I don't always see it at the beginning, but as you play, I was like, dang, being around them makes me want to be more organized. Being around them makes me believe for things I didn't believe for. Being around them makes me want to know the Bible more. Being around them makes me want to be a better husband to my wife. Like, dang, they do date night every Monday. Like, dang, okay, let me, like, you need friends with crazy faith. So, So you got family with crazy faith, but then you have friends with crazy faith. And let me give you what I wrote under here. You may not share the same blood, but you share the same beliefs. That's how you know they're a crazy faith friend is you may not share the same blood, but we share the same beliefs. When it comes down to it, we going to be believing for the same thing. But then there's this next level because this is where most people stop. They got their crazy faith family, their crazy faith friends. But then I found that there's this other group that you need when you live a little life. When, when you start living and it's not just about where we're going on vacation and going double dating and going to the movies, like when life hits you, that next circle that you need for your circle of faith is fighters with crazy faith. I can have family and I can have friends, but if I'm going to reach the destiny that God has called me to reach and be able to do everything that I need, I need just at least a couple fighters that have the audacity to believe with me when I can't believe for myself. Let me help you understand. I'm just trying to give you the formula of the people you need and you need to really evaluate who's around you because fighters with crazy faith, these people will sacrifice something to see you go into your promised land. They might not even make it in, but they're a fighter for you. And they'll say, I'll intercede for you. I'll give my money for you. I'll meet you at the spot. Uh, So many of us do not have fighters who will get in the Garden of Gethsemane with us. And everybody always plays Peter, James, and John because they fell asleep. But they were there. They they still were there. They may not have done it perfect and even met the expectations. I can even see it in the scripture when Jesus goes to them and basically says, man, wake up. I'm sweating blood. About to go to the cross. Y'all can't at least pray with me. He doesn't tell them to go away, though. He gives them another opportunity to see him in his most vulnerable moment. He says, fight with me. And Peter, he was a fighter. He just got it wrong. Jesus wanted him to fight in the spirit. He pulled out his shank. But he had the raw materials. Nah, see, y'all are so judgmental to the Bible characters. He had fight. The only reason he was there, because he had fight in him. When the soldiers came, he was like, shink, shink. He cut his ear off and Jesus was like, no, that was the wrong time to fight. I needed you an hour ago and you were sleeping. He put, picked up the ear. He's like, my bad, Thaddeus. And he put it back on his, like, that's what the Bible said. Y'all don't read your Bible. But he had, he had fighters in his corner. And some of the people you're calling bestie and lifelong friends and people that you are planning to spend more time with and you talk to them every day. See, the reason I'm saying this is because these are the people closest to you and they are affecting what you hear. And when they affect what you hear, they affect the level of faith that you have. And I'm just asking you, who's talking to you? Who's shaping your life? Who's talking to you and shaping your life? Okay, let's do it like this. 
If you don't have nobody that can see you at your worst and still fight for you at your best, you don't have no fighters. I'm trying to tell you what I had to do when believing for this building and believing currently for my son's healing and believing. I don't, I don't need, I don't need fans when I really need fighters. Like, like, I don't need nobody to just be clapping and be like, oh yeah, no, 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 no. Get down in the trenches with me. Fast and pray when I'm not fasting and praying. Uh-oh, you missed it. Have you ever gone on a fast for somebody else that wasn't on a fast for themselves? You ain't no fighter. Have you ever, oh my gosh. And what I found out is that this type of friend, family member, because you can be a family member, a friend, you can be a fan that goes to a fighter. I've had people that watch me from afar, but when we met, something in them had a gangster in them. And they, they, they skipped a whole bunch of steps and got into my inner circle. Why? Because they had a fight in them for me and for my family and for my purpose. And this is the circle of faith, whether you have it now or not. Because at the middle of this circle is you. I want you to see it. There you are with your crazy faith. There you are with all of your belief. And what you have to do now is if these people aren't full with crazy faith, you have to fight all of them to get to the thing that God has called you to do. Well, God told me that we're supposed to move to Dallas. What's in Dallas? Who, who, who going who gonna to provide for you there? Who's going to help you? All right, fighters, let me go ahead and go to my friends. Hey, guys, I feel like God's calling me to go to Dallas. So what that mean for our group? What that mean for our every Friday? Every Friday, we have a... Okay, let me go to my family. Hey, family, I believe that God's calling us. Our family has always lived here. And you would leave us for the things... That and this is many of our lives fighting the people who should be giving us faith. <sighs> Let me go to the Bible. Numbers chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. Familiar scripture. Y'all just give me a few more minutes to work this thing out. It took me a long time to set this up to give you this right here. There was these two guys named Caleb and Joshua. Remember, I'm talking about hearing and the things that you're hearing, building your faith. And you got to have a circle of faith, your family, your friends, your fighters. This is all affecting your hearing. It says, the Lord now said to Moses, send out men to explore the land of Canaan. Watch this though, underline this. The land I am giving to the Israelites. It is a foregone conclusion. God is saying, I am giving this to you. Send one leader from each of the 12 tribes. So what ends up happening is, Moses calls 12 dudes up and two of them name was Joshua and Caleb. They were just representing some of the tribes and they were supposed to go into this land that God promised. God promised this land like he promised you a child, like he promised your marriage would succeed, like he promised you would be secure, like he promised you wouldn't be dependent on that medicine forever, like he promised you. And they were supposed to go there and give a report so that the two million people that were in the tribe of the children of Israel could go in and possess. They came out of slavery already. And they're in this in-between spot trying to get into the promise of God in the middle, like most of us are right now. Look what happens in Numbers chapter 13, verse 25. After exploring the land for 40 days, the men returned to Moses and Aaron and the whole community of Israel at Kadesh in the wilderness of Paran. They reported to the whole community. So they had the ear of the entire community. This was the news station for the entire children of Israel. This was the soundtrack for the entire children of Israel. This was the podcast. They had the ear of the leaders and the entire community. And they had seen what they were good to tell them, reported to the whole community what they had seen and showed them the fruit they had taken from the land. 
This was their report to Moses. We entered into the land you sent us to explore, and indeed, a bountiful country, a land flowing with milk and honey. Here is the kind of fruit it produced. And it literally said that a bushel of grapes was so big that it would be the equivalent of two men having to carry it between each other on a two by four. A grape as big as your big old head. And think of, no, I want you to think about one grape as big as your head. Okay? This is the land. Everybody say, but. Ooh. But the people living there are powerful and their towns are large and fortified. And we even saw giants there. The descendants of Anak, you know Anak. The Amalekites lived in the Dejeev and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites and the Gladys Knights. They were all in the hill country. The Canaanites, they live along the coast in the Mediterranean Sea. It's just a lot. We saw the promise, but to possess it would be a lot. We see the great thing that God has for us, and we even tasted it. Brought back proof that it's real. But it's going to cost us something to possess it. But Caleb, everybody say, but Caleb. Verse 30, but Caleb tried to question, shut up. Everybody, shut up. Everybody, I'm sorry, excuse me, be quiet. Um, I have a report. Let's go up at once and take the land. We can certainly conquer it. This is the language of a fighting friend. Let's go. If when you bring your crazy faith ideas to the people who are closest to you and they don't have a let's go in them, they may not need to have your ear. I'm not saying being frivolous. I'm not saying not finding out what the best plan of action or being strategic. But if the first thing is to tell you why it can't happen, they don't got an automatic let's go. They may not be somebody that wants you to see the promised land. Caleb is the only one. And why did Caleb try to quiet them? Watch this. Because what they say will affect what you'll see. What they say, and I don't know who your they is, but what they say will affect what you see. Some of y'all right now are in positions because of what they said. Some of you, oh my God, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Some of y'all are in careers right now. Because of what? They, you ain't like that job since you started it. You didn't like that field, but somebody that they said needed you in that field. And now you're doing something. You're 14 years into something you hate because they said it. What they say will affect what you'll see. How do you know that, Pastor Mike? Because they shut Caleb up so quick. But the other man who had explored the land with him, they disagreed. I don't know what that fool talking about. I don't know what he saw. We can conquer it. We can move in crazy faith. We can buy the Spirit Bank event center. We can buy the entire community around it. We can buy the transformation. I don't know what he saw. Do you know that if the people that were around me when God gave me those visions would have sowed seeds of doubt and fear, we may not be standing here today. Because the people you love the people you trust can also be people without faith. People don't think about this. The same people you love, the same people you trust can also be depleted in faith. And it literally says right here, they go to com complaining again. We can't go up against them. They're stronger than we are. So watch this. So they spread this bad report about the land among the Israelites. The land we traveled through and explore, watch this, will devour anyone who goes to live there. They just exaggerated their own fear 
to make other people even more scared. Yes, wow. That's good teaching. Be careful of people who've never crossed into a land that God called you to live in. Yeah. Yeah. He might have called them there, but something kept them from going. So you may have to go past their experience to get into your promised land. I'm talking to somebody right now. I love you, but I got to move past your experience. I need you in my life if you want to stay, but I got to move. Somebody say, I got to move past this. We're not going to be broke all of our life. We're not going to always struggle with this. We're not. I got to move past this. They exaggerated their experience to give other people anxiety. Don't let anybody else's fear cripple your faith. There are so many stories that I hear when y'all write in or DM about what God's telling you to do. And all it takes is one conversation from somebody who helped you in a past season to be able to literally deflate your faith. That, just that quick. But I'm telling you, something in you has to say, I'm not going out like that. I, I'm not going to miss the great things God has for me based on the experience of what I'm hearing from somebody who didn't live in the promised land. You didn't even live there. You didn't, even, you didn't even go there and you're telling me they're going to devour everybody who decides to live there? Did you live there? They made up something to make people scared. And it said all the people we saw were huge. We even saw giants there, descendants of Anak. And then watch how, watch how dramatic these fools are. Next to them, when we stood next to them, when we got in their presence, when we looked at their church and their business and their nonprofit and their social media, when we compared ourselves to them, we felt like grasshoppers. And that's what they thought too. How do you know? You didn't talk to them. You just assumed your own insecurity and then projected it on your enemy. To reinforce why you need to stay in the same box you're in right now. Yup. That's why I tell people it's very important, Caleb, who has your ear. Because leading with feelings always spreads fear. If anybody that you around is leading with their feelings, fear gets spread. These people did not even experience it for themselves. That's why I'd be real leery of people who'd be like, all you young ladies, don't get married. Don't get married. All men are is blah, 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 blah. And these dudes, these OGs like, hey, 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 little player. Don't sell down, player. I've been married twice, bro. All you want to do is play the field. Play the field. First base, second base, third base, outfield, play the field. Just because your marriage failed twice and now you've exaggerated this experience to spread it to me so that I would have fear for doing what the Bible says, marry the wife of your youth. Play the field. You're too young to get married. What? Am I going to go on your word or the word of God? And so many of us, here we go. Who has your ear? Uncle June June got your ear. He got your ear. And now you sitting there with the woman you should be planning purpose with. Messing around on her. Because Uncle June June, when you was 15, told you not to settle down. And you're literally about to forfeit God's plan for you. Because of who had your oh. Your, your, uh, your business partner who's going to help you take over that industry is at the school that your family hates the colors. 
Oh, yeah, we just had an Oklahoma-Texas game. And um, some of your purpose, Oklahoma fans, may be at Texas. And I'm just using this as an example because some of y'all Texas people, the purpose that God has for you might be in Oklahoma. Pastor Mike, why are you even using this as an example? Because some of you let something as trivial as a college and colors keep you from obeying God. I'm in somebody's business right now. And it may not be a college in colors, but it may be somebody's color of their skin. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Some of you are supposed to be in partnership with somebody who doesn't look like you, but all your family said, don't you interact with those (laughs) and don't you be around those and don't you bring no white girl in here and don't you bring no darkie in here and all of these things. Oh my God. Who has your ear? I'm in your business. And the purpose of God on your life and the faith that he wants to take you to is being stopped by all these people who have your ear and being led by their feelings. And when you let feelings lead, it always spreads fear. That's why 1 Peter 5, 7 says, give all your worries. Give all your cares to God for he cares for you. Can I tell you what happened to sum up this whole story? Because 10 came back and had the ear of the people. They literally started to rebel against everything that God had did for them to take them out of slavery. Look at it. I got to show you. Numbers chapter 14, verse 1. Then the whole community began weeping aloud. Ah! Ah! And they cried all night. Their voices rose in great chorus of protest against Moses and Aaron. If only we had died in slavery. If only we would have stayed in that jacked up abusive relationship. If only we would have kept being an alcoholic or a liar or somebody who went to things instead of Jesus. We should have gone back to our slavery. They complained. Why is the Lord taking us to this country only to have us die in battle? How weak are you? Who signs up for the army and then when they got to fight, say, how did we get here? You signed up for a battle. But at the moment of the fight, that's when you need faith. Why is the Lord taking us to this country to have us die here. Our wives and our little ones will be carried off as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to return to slavery to Egypt? Then they plotted among themselves. Let's choose a new leader and go back to the thing that had us bound. See, this is why you got to watch who you hear. Because it will make you think what you got free from is better than where you are today. There are too many times that when you get in a fight and God's trying to take you to another level of faith, if you don't have the right circle of faith around you, you'll get with those people because their faith was being built. Remember, faith comes by and it's whatever you hear. So they were hearing the negative report, the bad report. They were spreading anxiety. They were going through fear. They started plotting and planning to go back to what had them bound because their faith was being built in the wrong thing. And this is the thing I want to tell you. Write this point down. What you receive determines how you respond. See, there's a difference between hearing and listening. So like I can hear a bunch of stuff, but I listen when I actually receive it. And these people heard the report of those 10, not the report. They heard the report of Caleb and Joshua. Remember that? They heard their report too, but they heard and received the report of the 10. And what you receive determines how you respond. They started responding in anxiety and fear because they received the bad report. And look what happens in verse five. Then Moses and Aaron fell face down on the ground before the whole community of Israel. Two of the men who had explored the land, Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephne, he said, tore their clothes. They was trying to get attention. Ah, they got butt naked. 
please listen. I'm willing to embarrass myself so that you can see that God has something better for us. It says, they said to all the people, the land we traveled through and explored is a wonderful land. And if the Lord is pleased with us, he will bring us safely into that land and give it to us. Watch the language of a fighter. It says, it is rich land flowing with milk and honey. Do not rebel against the Lord and don't be afraid of the people of the land. They are only helpless prey to us. That is some gangster talk right there. You need people in your corner that'll say at the biggest mountain, at the biggest giant, at the biggest obstacle, all that is is helpless prey to us. That ain't nothing. 10.4 million dollars for this building? That ain't nothing. Ugh. 20 million for the land outside? That ain't nothing. The money I need to go back to college? That ain't nothing, y'all. Who in your life is telling you, well, I have moving expenses and this and that, and I got to find an apartment, I got to qualify. You need a friend that'll say, that ain't nothing. Well, how is it going to happen? And how am I going to get the LLC? And how am I going to get the nonprofit status? And how am I going to, you need somebody to say, that ain't nothing. He said, that ain't nothing to us. Watch this. They have no protection, but the Lord is with us. Don't be afraid of them. Don't be afraid of them. What they said, don't be afraid of them. See, the only way you can have this type of language in your life and people around you like that is you believe the promise. Remember what I read all the way back at the beginning? It said that Moses was told by God to go explore the land of Canaan, the land I'm giving to you. All the other 10 didn't remember the promise of God. Only Caleb and Joshua rehearsed the promise. And this is the type of friends you need around you. People who will fight and remind you of the promise that God said over your life. Melody, everything God said about you, everything he said about your singing and your music, remember those words that God said to you. You gotta have people around you. That's why you don't marry no husband who won't remind you of the promise of God. You don't marry a wife who won't remind you of the promise of God. I won't always be on a mountain, but when I'm in a valley, I need somebody around me to remind me of the promise. God said that we will be the head and not the tail, that we will be above and not beneath, that we can take the land land. Wow. Come on. This, is good. This, is, wow. this is what we have to do right this point down. Believing the promise changes your perspective. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Caleb and Joshua had a different perspective because Caleb and Joshua actually believed the promise. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the only difference. They saw the same thing. Mm -hmm. They saw the same grapes. They saw the same giants. They saw the same problems. They saw the same opportunities. And the only thing that separated them is believing the promise of God. Remember at the beginning when I was talking about the atmosphere of crazy faith is what? Belief. If you don't have an atmosphere of belief, you'll forget the promise and forfeit the purpose. Verse 10. But the whole community. I mean, these dudes is out there. I just want you to get a picture in your holy imagination of two grown men naked trying to convince you to walk into the promise of God and the whole community look at them and be like yeah verse 10 um should we stone them <laughs> like I want y'all to read this the whole community to begin to talk about stoning Joshua and Caleb I was trying to help y'all I was, I was just trying to help your business. I was just trying to help your family. And you want to stone me? I always wondered as I read this, was there people in the crowd perhaps that believed Joshua and Caleb? That the promised land, they could have taken it, but the crowd got caught up in fear 
and they contracted it too? See, the thing you need to know is fear is contagious. But that means that faith is contagious too. Faith is contagious just like fear is contagious. What if a thousand of them would have raised up in faith and they would have started chanting, take the land, take the land, take the land. Think about it. Take the, we got it. Take the, that business, take the, that house, take the, that family, take the, these hills, take the. What if they would have started deciding that we can take this land, it would have spread. And that faith, JD, would have gone throughout two million people instead of fear. And by the end of the day, there would have been, I I see a scene from Braveheart where these babies are sitting there and they're like, "Ah, we ready, hey, we ready. Like I see, hey, we ready. Come on giants, boy, yeah. I'm gonna eat them grapes. We like, do y'all see what I'm saying? That's the team I want to roll with. That's the type of people I need on my time for the dreams that God has given me. I got to have crazy faith fighters around me. Had a bunch of people in fear. And that's why I I try to warn people, don't stay around TC if you don't want this faith to jump off on you. I'm telling you, like you don't be around, like don't keep logging on. Because the same way fear is contagious, it's the same way faith is contagious. Stay around here long enough, you're going to start believing God for something. (laughs) You stay around long enough, you're going to start seeing healings, miracles. Y'all, I can't get nobody to believe with me. But stay around here long enough because faith is contagious. Verse 11, these people rebelled. Said, and the Lord said to Moses, now this is God talking to the leader of these people. How long will these people treat me with contempt? Saddest five words. Will they never believe me? When God talks about you, is he saying, will they never believe me? Even after all the miraculous signs, they're here. They didn't think they was gone. And they, and I saved them from. After everything I did, God gets frustrated with these people because he's done so much to get them to this promised land. He about to lay the smack down on them. I'm talking about straight the rock 1999 smack down on them. But then we see Moses. Moses becomes a fighter for the people who were stuck in unbelief. Let me ask you a question. Who is fighting for you when you don't believe? See, this is how you know you have a fighter. Moses goes to God in Numbers chapter 14, verse 17. Listen to this man plead with God on behalf of people who didn't even want to believe. Please, Lord. Prove that you, your power is as great as you have claimed for it to be. He's remembering, he was trying to remind God of his promise. For you said, uh uh-oh. See, this is the most powerful thing about reading the Bible is you can remind God of what he said. When your situation don't look like it, you can say, but you said, my daughters use this on me all the time. I'd be like, no, it's bedtime. But daddy, you said we could watch a movie going to bed. I did say that, didn't I? And like, Every defense that you have, when you remind your father of his word, it changes the dynamic. It said, for you said, the Lord is slow to anger and filled with unfailing love, forgiving every kind of sin and rebellion. You know these people bad, Lord, and they sinning and rebelling. But he does not excuse the guilty. We know you're a fair and just God. He lays the sins of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generations. In keeping with your magnificent, unfailing love, please pardon the sins of these people, just as you have forgiven them ever since they left Egypt. 
Then the Lord said, I will pardon them as you have requested. What if Moses hadn't fought for the children of Israel? This is a type and shadow, Brentham, of what Jesus would do on the cross for us. When he stretched out and he says, forgive them because they, they don't know what they're doing. This is what he's saying right here, a type and a shadow. Forgive the children of Israel because even in their rebellion, they don't even have a clue. They don't even know what they're doing. And my question to you is, do you have the type of leader, friend group, family member, fighter who has, watch this, write this point down, who has enough faith for you to borrow? Moses had faith for people who couldn't believe. And my question to you is who around you has faith that you can borrow? I think about my fighting friends. Like I got some. One of them, um, one of me and Pastor Natalie's fighting friends is uh, Pastor Bree and her husband, Aaron. Um, I remember um, when they were going through a rough time in their marriage and they called us to their house with another friend, the Stantons, to tell us they were getting a divorce. Papers were signed. We're getting a divorce. We just wanted y'all to know. And we listened to their whole spiel. And something rose up in me. Said, nope. No. No. Y'all haven't done enough to be able to see God intervene. We have not done. And I mean, for 25 minutes, the fighter in me rose up. And I was trying to give them faith to borrow. They, there was too much hurt there for them to have faith for themselves. There was too much pain there for them to do it for themselves. But as a group of four friends, we got around them and we fought for the marriage that they have today. They couldn't see it. Uh, but I saw what God wanted to do in their life. And we sat there and we let them borrow our faith even if it was for that day to get them to the next day. And today they've been married almost six years because not because of us, because at some point their faith kicked in at some point they had to start believing at some point they had to start acting on it. But if we wouldn't have been there to stand in the gap, what friends do you have? What community do you have that will stand in the gap? that has enough faith for you to borrow. See, there's consequences to unbelief. These people in verse Numbers 14, 23, ugh, Jesus said, all right, I ain't going to kill them. Stay with them, Moses. But because you're riding for the wrong people, you'll never see the promised land either. Oh. What happens when you're surrounded by the wrong people and they cost you? your purpose. He said, I'm going to let you ride with them. But look at verse 20C. They will never even see the land I swore to give their ancestors. They won't even see it, Evan. None of those who have treated me with contempt will ever see it. But, oh, I like this. But my servant Caleb had a different attitude. He had a different attitude than them. He had a different attitude than the others. He has remained loyal to me, so I will bring him into the land he explored. His descendants will possess their full share. Oh, I like that. Of the land. Point. A different attitude creates a life of abundance. It was his different attitude. When the situation looked bad, he had a different attitude. Well, God can bring us through this. When the diagnosis came, he had a different attitude. Well, God shall supply all of our needs and he's a healer. We got to be the ones who have a different attitude because a different attitude creates a life of abundance. Yeah. Verse 26. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, how long must I put up with these wicked communities? He was sick of these people, y'all, because he keeps saying the same thing. He said, yes, watch this. I have heard. Hmm? We talked about faith comes by. 
and now God's hearing something? Yes, I have heard the complaints of the Israelites that they were making against me. Now tell them this, as surely as I live, declares the Lord, I will do to you the very things I heard you say. Oh, that's some good Bible. Keep saying you're going to die lonely. Keep saying I'm always going to be broke. Keep saying nobody will ever acknowledge my gifting. Keep saying it. Keep, say, keep declaring, keep confessing that I'm just insecure and I don't have the things that I need to be. Keep saying it. Because the thing that these people didn't realize as they were complaining about the place God had them in is God can hear too. And God told them, I will do for you the very things I heard you Say, you will all drop dead in this wilderness because you complained against me. Every one of you who is 20 years old or older and was included in the registration will die in the wilderness. You will not enter or occupy. You will not enter or occupy. You will not enter or occupy the land I swore to give you. I put it on me. I was going to give it to you. And because you spoke, I heard. The only exception. Ooh, I like this. The only exception. Somebody yell at me, exception. exception. Yell it one more time. Exception. The only exception will be Caleb and Joshua. The only two people who had crazy faith. At this time, most theologians believe there were two million people a part of the children of Israel. That means one million nine hundred and ninety eight thousand people. I don't even know if that's the right number. Everybody except two. (laughs) Everybody died in their wilderness. Except two people who were trying to fight for everybody to get into the promised land. Um, Just write this point down. God has ears too. I should have probably titled the message that. He has ears too. He's listening to what you're saying in the middle of the wilderness. He's listening to how you're responding after you receive a negative report. He's listening. And that's why I'm telling you, who's in your circle of faith is more important than anything that you could be trying to cultivate right now. Because when God gives me a crazy faith idea, I gotta have family with crazy faith I got to have friends with crazy faith and I got to have fighters with crazy faith. Can you put the picture of the ear back up there for me real quick? So I end this in asking who has your ear. See, because the whole thing about this entire story is if the children of Israel would have believed in their ears what Joshua and Caleb said, They would have lived in promise. Instead, they died in a wilderness. You know those three rings that I said uh, of the inner, the, the, the family, the friends, the fighter? I looked up in the ear. There's three parts of the ear too. It's the outer ear. There's the middle ear. And then there's the inner ear. Like, like the fans can be on the outside. But when I get... So what's going to help me flourish? I got to make sure who's, who's in these rings have faith. Pastor Mike, what do you want us to do? Evaluate everybody in your circle 
everything you listen to, everything that you keep letting in, when you get in the car and the radio station you turn to, they have your ear and your faith is being built because faith comes by here. And the priority of what we should be hearing is the word of God. We started a crazy faith, you version Bible plan. And so many of y'all have already done it, but I'm telling you every day, get into your Bible. It's very simple. Like go to the you version Bible out and literally type in anything that you're dealing with. Anxiety, stress, frustration, joy, peace, love. And there are Bible plans that you can literally follow every day. You can don't go do the crazy faith five days this week. Everybody go do the five day crazy faith Bible plan. Why? Because faith comes by. And the priority of hearing should be the word of God. But even when you hear the word of God, it still means you got to cut out other things you're hearing. Some of y'all have to delete your Spotify playlists. I know. Your Apple Music, it's, 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 it's cracking, huh? It's popping, huh? It's lit. But it's actually building your faith in something. That's a fantasy. Ooh. Go back and watch last week's message. Diamonds on my wrist, bust down, and I'm good, and I'm slapping, and it's robbing, and in my n- And God's trying to make you a man of valor. All I'm saying is, faith comes by. And the people closest to you affect your hearing. The people closest to me affect my hearing. Even if I love them, it doesn't mean they're filled with faith. So I'm asking everybody, the practical step this week is to get in the word of God. The second practical step this week is get in godly community. Find friends with faith. At TC, we call them B groups, belong groups, because everybody has a place they belong. Some of y'all, I don't like people. And I just, you know what I'm saying? It's weird. It's like we have over 300 small groups. And would you allow your purpose to flourish in the environment of faith? These people are listening and watching the same message you are right now. And I want to say I'm so proud of you because you're literally here hearing the word of God right now. Keep watching the messages. Keep going back. Watch other series. Keep getting it into. But there's something when somebody's able to see you. And you walk in and they can tell on your countenance something's off. And you can be in an environment and you can borrow some of their faith. I can't tell you how many times I walked in a small group not feeling it. And just being in the atmosphere. With people who believe, it changes everything about what I was feeling because I could borrow some of their faith. All I'm telling you is your circle of faith may be compromised. And what God's given you is a mandate. He's given you a mandate to protect your crazy faith purpose. Today, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for every person under the sound of my voice that number one, you would get people around you in your family, in your friends, and in your fighters who have crazy faith. And that God would send those people to you. It wouldn't be some reachy, weird, like, will you be my crazy faith friend? Like, don't be weird. Do you know the best way to get a crazy faith friend? Is to be a crazy faith friend. If you give what you don't have, you'll get what you actually need. Can somebody borrow your faith? Who are you interceding for? Who are you believing God for? When you do that, it changes everything. Hands lifted all over the world. Father, I'm thanking you right now. I feel your presence, God. Right now, you're changing our expectation. You're changing our priorities, Father. You're giving us principles. And today, God, I'm asking that for everybody under the sound of my voice, that you would give them a group of people in a circle of faith that will be able to walk with them through the ups and downs of this crazy faith journey. Father, I thank you that you would give us family. And if we don't have the family, we can start it, Father God. To be ones, Father, that walk in crazy faith. And then you would give us friends who have crazy faith. And Father, you would give us some rides, some fighters that would ride with us with crazy faith. 
God, I thank you, Father, for those who even feel lonely right now, that feel like they once had that, or maybe they had it, Father God. But now, because of circumstances and situations, Father, things have changed. God, you're a restorer. And I just thank you that you're bringing right people together for purpose. Align people's destinies. Let us desire this, Father God, from husbands and wives, boyfriends and girlfriends, business partners, co-workers. Father, align people's lives and let us protect our ears so that we can protect our purpose. Give us a circle of faith. Somebody just say that. God, give me a circle of faith. Just one more time. Say, God, give me a circle of faith. And I believe, Father God, that as we are planted in the right soil, I declare that people are about to flourish. Woo! Businesses are about to flourish, God. Families are about to flourish, God. Thank you for being a God who cares about every detail of our life. We trust you, we believe you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. amen. Listen, 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 listen. There are some people in here that need to give their life to Christ. And the first crazy faith step that you need to take is by getting in the family of God. All you have to do, according to Romans 10, 9, is accept that Jesus Christ went to the cross for you and that he died for your sins and rose again with all power so that your eternity could be secure. Today, I want to give you the opportunity to start on your crazy faith journey. And I can feel that there are thousands of people. I need everybody to start praying right now. If you've already come into this relationship with God, because this is why our church exists, so that people could be a part of the family. That's the whole reason why God sent Jesus is so people could be a part of God's family. And today, you may be like how I was, out there. I was a liar, a manipul manipulator, addicted to pornography, somebody who had all kinds of crazy stuff in my heart. And God says, you, I'll use you. Why not you? And I gave him control of my life and he became my savior and my Lord. And some of y'all are tired of running, tired of having to do it all on your own, tired of lifting the burden alone. And God said, can I have that? He wants to help you right now. In just a moment, we're going to say a prayer. And I don't care if you're watching this live, you're watching on rebroadcast, you're watching 10 years from now. This is the moment of salvation. And thousands of people are praying for you right now because your life can transform in this moment through your, uh-oh, belief. That's all it is. It just takes faith. We are saved by grace through faith. And all you got to do is put your belief in Christ right now. On the count of three, if you want to be a part of this prayer and accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, all I want you to do is raise your hand wherever you're at, on the track, at home, at your office cubicle. It doesn't matter. I want you to just say, Pastor, include me in that prayer. One, you're making the greatest decision of your life. Two, I'm so proud of you, but that don't even matter because your name will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Three, lift your hand up all over the world. Come on, wherever you are, lift your hand up. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can put your hand down right now. See, because you don't have to confess everything that you've done. God sees you. And right now, we're going to pray a prayer as a family. That's what Transformation Church is. If you don't have a family of faith, you can come to this one. And we'll help you, walk with you. Transformation Church, you know nobody prays alone here. So all of us are going to say this prayer for the benefit of those who are coming to Christ right now. Would you just close your eyes and say, God... Thank you for sending Jesus just for me. Thank you for being my friend who fought for me. I believe you lived, you died, and you rose again for all of my mistakes. And today, I make you the Lord of my life. Change me. Renew me. Transform me. I'm yours in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, can we give God? Oh, y'all better come on. Let's give God a big shout of praise. Come on, let's just sing this one more time. We're going to sing it all out. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, lift it up in your house. Say, you have won the victory. Come on, I want you to just lift your hands and worship.
worship God. Say hallelujah. You have won it all. You have won it all for me. And death could not hold you down. Said you are, you are, you are the reason. You're seated in majesty. Yeah. Woo. Said you are the reason. All right. So this week is going to be a little rough for some of your friendships and your family relationships. Because this week God's going to start pointing out things, and you don't disown and. Like, I can't talk to you no more. You set, everybody say boundaries. Yep. Some of y'all need to get new numbers. <laughs> Some of you need to take off your HBO subscription and your star subscription. It has too much access to your ears. You getting broke, you losing money and losing purpose. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Like, let's get in the word of God and let's find the people who are going to fight in our circle of faith. Amen. Next week, you do not want to miss what God has given me. I already got the message for next week, y'all. It's about to go to a whole nother level. Run this one back twice. Run the one before it back once. And then come ready for what God is going to do this week. I declare this is going to be the best week of your life. That God's favor is going before you and he's following you. That you are a fighter of faith and you're going to make a difference in the world today. Your best days are in front of you and God is for you. So it don't matter who's against you. This is your season and we will live in crazy faith. If you believe it, give God one big shout of praise. Go out and live a transformed life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.